All right, what's up, children? My battery's gonna die. Like shit. Um, there was a conversation on pro wrestling talk, and fucking my battery's fucked up. Uh, I'm gonna try to make this quick. Uh, there's a video about Gunner from DNA. Uh, Gene Carlos posted the news about him on TUWC, and uh. <sighs> You know, I should have knew something like this was coming. I'll save my comment about Gene on my next video. But uh, Gunner's released. Um, this is really shocking because... Uh, Jesus Christ. I was waiting for him to come back. I was asking where uh, he's been. I remember posting a picture of Gunner about a couple of months ago saying, Have you seen this man? Because he's been off TV since like that fight with Sam Shaw or whatever. Um, I remember when Gunner came in at 2010, he came in as a security guard with, with Murphy and he was actually a legit security guard. Like I have a friend that went to a TNA show back then and Gunner and Murphy told him to stop cursing. So he was like a wrestler that was a real security guard, but I guess because there were wrestlers like in the, in the local promotions, they, they made them wrestle in TV. So they had Gunner and Murphy in a tag match. What the fuck is that? And then they made them an immortal, like immortal security for Hulk Hogan. Right? They were like a heel tag team. Then they started rest wrestling in ring gear and became a legit tag team. And then they broke up. Gunner became like the top guy out of them. He was pushed. He became TV champion. Uh, and... um. The interesting thing about Gunner, TV champion, was he lost it to Eric Young, but I thought it was because they were going to focus him on bigger things. Like, uh, there was reported in 2011 during the Immortal Era that TNA was really interested in pushing four guys. Uh, Bobby Roode, Gunner, Matt Morgan, and Crimson. And all four of these guys were in that Bound for Glory series, and they all did well. Like, they were like the top four guys, I think. Of that year, 2011. The only ones out of all of them that ended up being a world champion was Bobby Roode. Which is weird because I think all four of them should have been the next guys to lead the company into the 2010s and into the future. But whatever. Um, and then after Immortal fell, because they disbanded, Gunner was like still a heel. But then he became a face. Um, like, I thought he was a member of Ace and Eights. But uh, they had him team with Kid Cash after that. Then he was a heel, a face, yeah. And he actually had a good backstory because he was a serviceman. He was like in the war. Um, yeah, he's, he was a soldier, and they used that for his gimmick a lot. And um, he had this ph phenomenal look too. I mean, a big guy with the it factor tattoos everywhere. Um, he did the F five. Uh, he had the the gun rack. Um, because his name's Gunner and he's like soldier, you know. Great wrestler, great talent. Um, he's going to be missed. I don't know what, what the hell happened and why they didn't renew his contract. You know, he says he's taking bookings. Um, I remember that tag team he had with James Storm where he was his mystery partner, the sinner and the saint. Because he was like a soldier, right? But he was a Christian and he talked about God and stuff. And then James Storm was like the beer drinker, the, the cursor, you know. Um. And uh, I don't know what happened. Like, that tag team broke up, and then he won Feast or Fire. That's why they broke up. James Storm turned heel because he was jealous. And uh, he they had a feud because he cost him the title shot that he had against Champion Magnus. Um, he beat the shit out of Gunner's father right in front of him. I actually attended a show, Lockdown, where uh, Gunner was wrestling James Storm. It was like a cage last man standing or something. And, uh, or deathmatch or something. Um, and Gunner was over. Like, even little kids were behind me. Like, they were yelling in our fucking family's ear. They were like, let's go, Gunner! Like, these little kids, no lie, bro. Uh, it was great to see Gunner live fighting James Storm, and he won, too. And then he won the match that they had at Sacrifice, too. Uh, he destroyed James Storm in that match. Brutalized that boy. I personally don't know why. This guy should have been a world champion in TNA. Um, and I'm not just saying that because he's a TNA guy. I generally feel like he had the look, the it factor, the mic skills, and plus the buildup that TNA gave him over the past years. Why didn't he have a run with the world title?
And he was already a former TV champion and a former tag team champion. So I don't understand why they why they didn't do it. Um, and all those years of Gunner being a heel in Immortal and then teaming with Kid Cash and then a singles competitor. I was uh, shocked that he could have been such a good face. Like, he was a good face, you know. Um, but, yeah, Gunner will be missed. Uh, I'm really upset that he didn't come back. I expected him back in May. But uh, good luck wherever he goes. He may go to GFW. I see them taking him, definitely. Phil Shatter. And that's the thing. He wrestled in NWA, too. And he had a feud with, for the world title of NWA with Adam Pearce. Adam Pierce called him a Neagrathal or something. <laughs> and his wife is hot, too. But, uh, yeah, Gunner, great wrestler. He'll be missed. TNA dropped the ball huge. And for all the people that say I like everything they do, uh, I don't like this um, at all. So there you go. And I personally feel like they should get him back. And that's the thing. I thought maybe they got rid of him because Crimson came back or whatever. I thought these two should have been a great tag team. I mean, I know Crimson was a tag team with Matt Morgan, but these two could have been a good Tag team of former military personnel. Yeah. Phil Shatter, a.k.a. Gunner Release, not happy. Uh, but I wish him luck wherever he goes. Maybe he'll go to GFW, you know? Now, this is off the subject, but um, apparently at best in the world, the Ring of Honor pay-per-view, Jay Lethal won the championship from Jay Briscoe. Um, this was predictable. This guy had like a year and a half of buildup. Um, I didn't like Jay Lethal because I loved him in DNA like his whole time there, but I wasn't happy at the fact that he wasn't willing to come back for Destination X. But I guess I can see why now. Um, Jay Lethal's a great talent. Um, he's a Ring of Honor original. They built him up and then they gave him the title. And even when he returned to Ring of Honor in 2011, uh, they built him up first. You know, they didn't just slap the belt on him. So, um, I'm personally proud of Jay Lethal. Um, I'm happy for Jay Lethal. And I'm a fan of him again. And I don't know if I'm going to watch ROH, but I'll definitely check it out now that he's champ. So, yeah, good job, Jay Lethal. Uh, I hope you have a great run. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Gunner getting released or leaving DNA or whatever, parting ways with them. And let me know what you think of Jay Lethal being the champion of ROH. Because I personally feel he deserves it. And I know Ring of Honor likes long title runs. So it should be interesting how long Jay has it. But yeah, um, I guess I'll see you guys later. Peace out. And that's it. How I would have booked Slamiversary is later this week. God bless you guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.